Welcome to Mission Minute News. I'm Dominican Sister Jean Harris. First, the headlines. Attacks continue on Canadian churches. More truth talk. Mission without borders. Crisis in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique. St. Dominic inspires us today. Let's break the trafficking cycle. Attacks continue on Canadian churches. In recent months, dozens of churches throughout Canada have been the objects of attack, ranging from vandalism to arson, with at least 10 churches completely destroyed by deliberately set fires. Police in Vancouver have noted a marked increase in acts of vandalism against churches since the beginning of June, with 13 incidents, including rocks thrown at windows, graffiti, and threats of arson. In the neighboring suburb of Surrey, the Coptic Orthodox Church was destroyed by fire on July 19th, just days after an earlier arson attempt had failed. Many of the attacks appear to be related to outrage against Christian churches for their role in the residential school system, which saw indigenous children taken from their homes and families and placed in schools aimed at isolating them from their native culture. At the end of May, around 200 unmarked graves were discovered at the site of a residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia, drawing attention to the fate of thousands of native children forced into the system. Subsequently, hundreds of unmarked graves have been discovered at other schools. Indigenous leaders have spoken out against the attacks on churches. Destroying property will not help us build the peaceful, better, and accepting Canada we all want and need, said Assembly of First Nations Chief Perry Bellegarde. He added, I believe in processes that unite rather than divide. Violence must be replaced by turning to ceremony and all that our old people taught us about peaceful coexistence and mutual respect. Thoughtful dialogue, not destruction, is the way through this. In a statement earlier this month, the church likewise emphasized the importance of dialogue. The right path forward is one of reconciliation, dialogue, and atonement with indigenous people, and in following the way they would lead us in that process. After the latest incidents, police in Vancouver say they are working to prevent crimes and are calling for increased vigilance. Fortunately, nobody has been hurt in these Vancouver incidents, and most of the damage has been minor, said Sergeant Steve Addison in the news release. More truth talk. Not long ago, we informed you of WordNet's new program called Truth Talk. Presenters on Truth Talk are experts, well experienced in their fields. Studies like theology, right relationships, unconditional love, transparency, and human happiness, T-R-U-T-H, and other specializations like the sciences, psychology, cosmology, aesthetics, metaphysics, and social service. On June 23rd, Mr. Ken Sawa, Executive Director of Catholic Charities in the Diocese of San Bernardino, shared his story of a young man's a search for a purposeful life. Rooted Sawa found his purpose in the social Jesus. mission of Christianity. My journey toward it took a, a number of faith, years, over 30 in fact, which included Indiana a variety of exposures like working with homelessness, scripture study, and spiritual direction, meeting Mother Teresa, live, and completing nice the formal academic authentication of his professional expertise. Friends. 
but he slowly followed the nudges he felt from God to imitate the radical love of many leaders of faith and committed his life as a professional social worker to respond to the suffering and the needs of the most vulnerable in society. All kinds of needs, but most deeply, the need for all people, regardless of circumstances, to be treated with dignity and respect. Mission Without Borders. Mission Without Borders began in 2017 from the network of schools run by the Sisters Servants of the Holy Spirit in Brazil, North Province, with the objective of evangelizing the students through missionary action, enlightening them with Trinitarian spirituality, helping them grow in communion with the global reality and attentive to the needs of the excluded. The first edition took place in the Migrant Integration Center run by the sisters in Braz, a neighborhood in the state of Sao Paulo. During a weekend meeting, the students worked with migrants from the Latin and Central Americas, Africa, and Asia. In the second experience, students met from all the schools of Brazil North in the state of Belo Horizonte, where they lived with residents of Brumadinho, a city severely affected by environmental crimes committed by the local mining company. There, the students got to know the reality of the Quilombola and indigenous communities. The pandemic and social isolation forced the school activities to go virtual. So the third edition of Mission Without Borders used Zoom under the theme United in Diversity and Respect and broke the boundaries to include students of Brazil South and Argentina Misiones provinces. And in tune with a more sustainable planet and a commitment to life, the students planted a tree. With the virtual Mission Without Borders 2021, we continue our quest to educate by evangelizing and evangelize by educating students who pass through our schools, tells Agostinho Travensolo, Jr., professor and advisor to the SSPS schools in Brazil North Province. Crisis in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique. Brother Thaddeus Nyanuba, SVD, the coordinator for justice, peace, and integrity of creation of Mozambique province, visited the displaced people from violence-stricken Cabo Delgado. He reports the following. During the first term break of the school calendar, in June, I made a visit to our parishes of Liupo, Mochinqual, and Monapo in order to see the situation of the internally displaced peoples of Cabo Delgado. Although I had planned to visit one of the largest IDP centers in Montepuez, it became impossible at the late hour according to government regulations. Nevertheless, listening to the stories of the displaced people in our parishes, it is obvious that the situation is rapidly deteriorating. Although the government claims the situation is under control, those who escape death have different stories. As a matter of fact, seven of the 16 districts in the Cabo Delgado province have been attacked, businesses vandalized, and houses burnt down by the so-called Al-Shabaab group. Thousands of young boys have been captured and taken for training and girls as young as 12 have been forcefully taken for marriage. Daily beheadings and killings of poor, innocent villagers force many others to abandon their homes. According to the government's official reports, the group has killed over 3,000 civilians and displaced over 800,000 people, a third of the total population of the province. However, undocumented reports indicate that the number is much higher 
and probably closer to half. Besides that, thousands of family members remain unaccounted for and thousands more are trapped in the bush in Palma. Even more worrisome and creating panic in the remaining districts of Gabo Delgado and nearby districts of Nampula and Nyasa are the rumors that the terrorist group now permanently resides in the district capital of Moshimboa da Praia, the third biggest district in the province. According to the rumor, about 90% of the group is now made up of Mozambicans and a few foreigners. St. Dominic inspires us today. Father Gerard Francisco Parco Timoner III, Master General of the Dominican Order, reflects on the life and legacy of St. Dominic as the order celebrates the 800th anniversary of its founder who died in Bologna on August the 6th, 1221. The octocentenary year running from January 6, 2021 to the same date in 2022 continues the theme at table with St. Dominic. It is inspired by the Mascarella table the table on which the first portrait of the saint was painted shortly after his canonization. In an interview by Vatican News reporter Amadeo Lomonaco, Father Gerard reflected on the 800th anniversary, the legacy of St. Dominic, and the commitment of his followers. Speaking on the anniversary, Father Timoner explained that the Mascarella table depicts St. Dominic at table with his brothers. The painting, he says, celebrates him not as a saint alone on a pedestal, but with his community, with his brothers. Father Timoner notes that the Mascarella table evokes other tables in the life of St. Dominic and Dominicans today. Of particular note is the miracle of the food when once the brothers had no food, and according to accounts, an angel of the Lord brought food to them. A miracle, Father Timoner says, which connects with the Eucharist. Another table is the table of fraternity, which is almost sacramental, being where the family gathers to share stories and share lives. More so, fraternity at table extends to brothers and sisters who have gone before us, which is why Dominicans pray for the dead when they sit at table. Likewise, the table is the place where we meet people who are different from us and who have different views of the world. It is a place where we invite strangers who want to share what nourishes us in the same way that Jesus invited Zacchaeus, the tax collector, to share table with him. Reflecting on the legacy of St. Dominic, Father Gerard highlights the relevance of the saint's message to the church and the world today, particularly amid the challenges of our times. He points out that Dominic pre preached the mercy of truth perfectly manifested in Jesus the face of the Father's mercy, as Pope Francis wrote in Misericordiae Vultus. St. Dominic inspires us against indifference to the sufferings of people, not just those on geographical peripheries, but also those at existential margins. Let's break the trafficking cycle. Talitha Kum, the global anti-trafficking network of consecrated life against trafficking in persons, launches a new campaign with a care-centered focus to break the cycle of human trafficking. Between 20 and 40 million people are estimated to be trapped in slavery today. We may be living side by side with victims who are exploited for labor, for prostitution, or for the profitable organ trade. Pope Francis has repeatedly denounced human trafficking as a scourge and a crime against humanity, saying that 
An economy without human trafficking is an economy of care. The trade is hard to eradicate because it earns global profits that exceed over 150 billion U.S. dollars every year for traffickers and goes largely undetected. Talitha Kum says that extra care is needed to raise awareness, save victims, and provide healing for survivors, thus breaking the cycle. Founded in 2009 by the International Union of Superiors Generals, Talitha Kum International coordinates 50 networks in over 90 countries. In 2020, Talitha Kum Networks worldwide cared for 17,000 survivors of human trafficking, providing safe housing, education, job opportunities, support to access justice and compensation, health care, and psychosocial assistance. Pope to youth, follow Christ. Pope Francis sends a message to young people gathered at Ladefest, the annual international prayer event held from August 1st to 6th in Medjugorje, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Entrusting them to the heart of Mary, the Pope invites young people to believe in the happiness of giving oneself to God. The guiding theme of the festival was, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Citing the words of the rich young man spoken of in all three synoptic gospels. As he ran to meet Jesus and inquire about gaining the happiness of eternal life, so Pope Francis sent his good wishes to the participants, along with a reflection on the theme. This young man of the gospel, whose name we do not know, but whose soul we do know, symbolizes all who participate in this event. He was educated and very knowledgeable and motivated with a healthy restlessness that urged him to seek true happiness, life in its fullness. That's why he looked to Jesus, who would direct him to God, from whom all good comes, including eternal life, which showed his spiritual maturity. Jesus answers him, the first step is concrete love for one's neighbor, not the love given simply by the observance of precepts, rather a gratuitous and total love. Then, as a second step, seeing the young man's attachment to material goods, Jesus suggests moving from a logic of merit, his own reward, to one of giving. If you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. The third step Jesus proposes is a radical choice. Come, follow me. It is a matter of being disciples of Jesus, which means not only imitating him outwardly, but conforming to him deep in our hearts. Following Christ is not a loss, but an incalculable gain. The rich young man, however, has a heart divided between two masters. God and money. Fear of losing his possessions makes him return home sad. The Pope concludes, do not be afraid to welcome the word of Christ and accept his call. Fix your gaze on Mary and entrust yourselves to her who says, yes, here I am, unreservedly when Christ calls. A school community garden. Pope Francis encyclical Laudato Si on care of our common home has inspired St. Albert the Great Institute, Argentina Misiones, to introduce the goal of healthy and sustainable food through gardening. As an educational community, we promote working the earth for students and teachers. We combine practical learnings and social life skills, which they will carry into the future. Teamwork, 
intra- and extra-curricular relationships, decision-making skills, knowledge about ecosystems, and practical skill of food production. With these interdisciplinary objectives, we are heightening our awareness of the impact of our attitudes and activities on Earth, as well as valuing ourselves and the power we have to make respectful changes toward sustainable use of resources, preservation of biodiversity, and greater appreciation of this great gift entrusted to us by God, our common home, Earth. Slovak province celebrates 90 years. On July 22nd, the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, the Holy Spirit Sisters in Slovakia celebrated 90 years of missionary presence. In 1931, responding to requests from young Slovak girls, the General Eight decided to establish a new region, and Mother Columba sent the first sisters to the small village of Spišky Štiavnik in the Tatras Mountains. Gradually, the sisters expanded their reach to corrective educational facilities for girls, hospitals, and schools. By 1947, some sisters were sent on mission to other countries. But with the arrival of the communist regime, the next year, the sisters were taken to concentration camps and forced to work in factories and fields. In 1968, they were allowed to return to missionary activities and open their convent doors to new candidates once more. In 1972, the government tried, unsuccessfully, to close them again, but even the communists knew that God could not be silenced. Since the revolution of 1989, the sisters have been able to live their SSPS charism to the full. Today, we are 64 members, 48 working in Slovakia and 16 in other countries. 107 sisters preceded us to eternity. Welcoming Iraqi Refugees Father Tomas Zerbach, SVD, in Slovakia, takes pastoral care of Christian families from Iraq who were accepted into parishes in Nitra and surrounding villages. He shares his experience. When the news broke that some refugees will come to Slovakia, I was glad that we showed enough sympathy and courage to accept a small group. I was a chaplain in another parish outside Nitra at the time, and it was not easy to explain to the parishioners there that it is our Christian duty to accept refugees. This is how we manifest living our faith and Christian love. A few days later, I met a very good person who said, Father, your words about the refugees were said nicely, wisely, and correctly. I agree with you, but I don't want them here anyway. Moreover, it should be remembered that Slovakia was committed to accepting Christians, not people of other religions. In the minds of the population, there is a risk of terrorism. Many of the people feel threatened. However, I'm afraid that in this attitude, we lose the possibility of being touched by the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that brings us to life. After our new friends arrived from Iraq, they waited for several days at the resort in Humine before moving to Nitra and the surrounding area. At the same time, Dozens of people were challenged to prepare for them, people from the bishop's office, diocesan charity, and the organization Peace and Good, finding accommodations, language courses, employment possibilities, and schools, and generally introducing them to the local environment and culture. Christianity and African Culture 
Sister Frida M. Wan, Sister of Charity, is nationally recognized in Nigeria for her integration of spirituality and psychology. She holds a master's degree in applied spirituality from Milltown Institute of Theology and Philosophy in Dublin, Ireland. Here's some of the wisdom she learned from her own life and from pastoral experience. Every person who grows up in a particular society is infused with the culture of that society. For Africans, worship expresses the feelings, negative and positive, toward the divine in different ways and through various media like songs, dance, drums, flutes, gongs, and incantations. Physical expression of some sort is necessary to reach God. Without it, there's no internal impact. Christianity is a faith experience, but it is expressed in cultural practices and ritual. Early missionaries in Africa made the mistake of trying to eradicate African practices, but it is impossible for Africans to dissociate Christian practices from their cultural religious background. In one of their synods, African bishops lamented that in Africa, Christianity is widespread but skin deep. Traditional African religious expressions are based in the community, connecting the living with their ancestors and also laden with taboos and abominations. Enter Pentecostal churches who had the wisdom to use African movement and instruments in worship evocative of the presence of God and to Christianize African rituals that feed the faith of the Africans. In these churches, Africans are moved to contemplation and experience a divine reality that overwhelms and frees them in the moment. When some Africans who feel that they are too dignified to dance in worship are shaken by incidents or experiences, their true nature comes out and they dance. Also, Africans prefer lengthier, meaningful ritual to quick, efficient liturgy. When Sister Frida creates a ritual to undo curses on victims of human trafficking, she uses a physical Christian item like the crucifix, incense, rosary, holy water, or clay to replace a pagan symbol. And many girls have credited the ritual for saving their lives. Sister feels that this sets free their strong spiritual power as Africans. If you have a comment or question about any of our stories, please email us at missionminutenews at wordnet.tv. You can also post your comments below each video on YouTube. We promise to respond. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon. Share with others about the channel and the variety of programs you enjoy there. Please join us every Wednesday for our online Eucharist and Adoration and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. To send us your prayer requests or to sponsor the Wednesday Eucharist, contact us by phone at 909-383-4333 or send an email to mail at wordnet.tv. This is Mission Minute News. Until we meet again, stay safe and well, and may Jesus' love for you make you smile.